Starship 24 joins its booster at the launch site. The Roberts Road location may be receiving a massive upgrade. We have a couple of Falcon launches coming our way, and we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. On the 4th of July, Elon shared another picture of Starship 24 sitting inside the high bay which came after SpaceX tweeted out an upskirt photo of the ship's recently installed Raptor 2 engines, three sea level and three vacuum. And there does appear to be room for three additional vacuum engines. The company also published an image of Booster 7's 33 sea level Raptors as the first stage sits on the orbital launch table at the launch site. She was joined this morning by Ship 24 after the Mars vehicle prototype and first to attempt Earth orbit in the near future made its way down Highway 4. 24 was then immediately hooked up for lifting onto Pad B, which could happen any time. Both vehicles and their pads are being prepared for static fire campaigns, which again, could happen at any time. So keep an eye on my local photographer pals lab Padre, Starship Gazer, and RGV Aerial Photography. Links to their accounts below. Also last Friday, we went over Starship 24's hookup to the Starlink loader machine. Well, for bonus points, RGV snapped a shot of the loader with conveyor extended afterward. Just thought you'd like to see it. Now that the Starbase site has finally been given a mitigated Fonzie by the FAA so they can launch these massive vehicles out of Boca Chica, their East Coast site at the Cape is beginning the environmental assessment process all over again. SpaceX wants to add at least an additional 100 acres of land to the north of their existing Roberts Road site for the development of office space and facilities in support of Starship vehicle and payload processing, fabrication, storage, manufacturing, and shipping and receiving, as well as construct a mile and a half long road from the site for easier access, presumably because SpaceX would rather utilize back roads to transport their slow crawling Starship and super heavy boosters. These are the 14 resource areas the new EA will consider before granting approval or denying the proposal. And this is where we're at in the process right now. Of course, I'll continue to keep you updated on the status of the site, but I also recommend you follow Greg Scott as he's our East Coast Eagle Eye Missile Man. We do have a couple expected Falcon missions from both coasts coming up, a Starlink launch from Vandenberg on Friday and a Cargo Dragon liftoff from Pad 39A next week on Monday. Subscribe to this channel on Rumble and YouTube if you'd like a viewing buddy for SpaceX launches. I do alternate which platform I go live on. And now it's time for today's honorable mention. On Friday evening, United Launch Alliance's Atlas V rocket took off from Cape Canaveral's Space Launch Complex 41 for the Space Force's billion-dollar USSF-12 mission to geostationary orbit. Always a pleasure watching side booster separations, brah. On board were two payloads, the Wide Field of View Missile Warning Satellite, and a payload adapter equipped with a half dozen classified small sat experiments, so that's all there is to discuss. But thanks for tuning in. Virtual high five for my local supporters backing what I do. Yeah. You're the real heroes. And I hope you all have a nominal work week. Until our next one, Godspeed. Godspeed.